And the Steelers are first and goal at the four. They're now in the Heinz red zone. It's Najee into the middle of the line. And the pile moves grudgingly, but goes forward. Goes Battle to the goal, goal line. Go. What are they going to call? That's a touchdown. They call touchdown. Ha-ha. I, no was, I was afraid they'd stop a forward progress, but guess what? It never stopped. That was no brotherly shove. That was that was a rugby scrum. Really just a good job by, you know, the O-line and, and, and the receivers and, and Coach Sully and Coach Falk of, of just doing what they have to do and, and, and establishing the run and really executing the game plan that they provided. I think that, you know, they really did a good job on that. Everybody, happy new year. I'm Missy Matthews alongside Bob Pompiani and welcome to the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface for the first time since 1983. The Steelers winning in Seattle and a very timely and needed win by the Steelers. Najee Harris, you saw that touchdown. One of two on the day for him. Jalen Warren also punched it in and they controlled the line of scrimmage and it was a hostile environment and the Steelers offense back-to-back 30-point -back games. I haven't seen that in three years, Missy, but you're right. The offensive line... It was just willing this team to a win. And the running backs, who are fresher as the season goes on because they're using both of them and, and very, very appropriately. Jalen Warren taking advantage of Dan Moore block and then down the field, George Pickens, everyone involved in this blocking game. And then you see stiff arms, you see Najee Harris running with conviction. And look at this, just to get into the end zone, to have the sort of physical balance to get in. Uh, and, and boy, he had 122 yards, Missy, 118 after contact, which tells you a lot about his effort. What a great effort there to get in. That one, and when you just freeze frame it or look at a steel photo, it's just crazy, just exactly what he was able to do. But shout out to the tight ends, all three of them right there, Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward, and Pat Fryermuth. Uh, that was also crazy, you know, but it just proved how much everybody was all invested in making sure that they came home with a win and see from against the Seahawks. Um, and it was just great to see, I thought, also the distribution in terms of what Mason Rudolph did in the air of involving a number of guys, but also, you know, controlling the game by running the football and leaving the Steelers defense on the sideline. I think it was either Miles Jack or Cam Hayward who joked like, hey, we got to drink a lot of Gatorade. That, mm -hmm. That's great for us. Yeah, especially a team that's been riddled with injury. Uh, you don't want them on the field, uh, you know, and, and Seattle conversely was on the field a lot defensively because the Steelers pounded, and I think it took a toll on that scrum play that Najee got in where the tight ends helped. Bobby Wagner is one of the best tacklers in the game. He was right in the middle of that, and he, had, he was helpless trying to stop it from going in. Then the stiff arm, then you saw two stiff arms. That's got to be a good feeling, Missy, on the field. You were there when you see stiff arms and the rest of the team responds to a stiff arm. The, the sideline was definitely, uh, you know, pretty excited whenever you see that, and it is kind of demoralizing for defense. We saw it, you know, Vance McDonald, that one down in Tampa. Everyone still talks about it. It's how he got the nickname the Vanimal um, and what that did. So, uh, yeah, great to see this offense. And I think, you know, coming alive at the right time, they still are going to need some help. And we'll go over the playoff scenarios in just a little bit. But do you think it was just a matter of finding their mojo? How did we get to this point where they are having the success, especially on the ground and being a balanced offense? Well, I think it works hand in hand. I, I think obviously Mason Rudolph has a lot to do with that. He's come in, he's been poised in the pocket. He's throwing down the field, keeping his eyes on down the field movement. And I think when you go through progressions and you stay there, things do open up and he's not afraid to take, uh, you know, calculated risk down the field. So. Yeah, they don't want to turn the ball over, but in order to make big plays, you got to be feeling pretty good about your ability to actually do it, and they do. But it all starts with the run game. If you're running the ball well, things magically open up. You can say the reverse of that is true, I guess, but typically the way the Steelers like to play it, this is the way it gets done. You possess the ball, you come up big on third down. That's what mm -hmm. I thought the key was yesterday. I think it was 50% on third down. Big difference. The weighty downs, as Coach calls them. And I thought even you know going for it on fourth down, uh, early on, just showing the aggressiveness that we saw from the game also against the Bengals last week. No question about that, and I think Mike Tomlin feels that contagious confidence that uh, has happened with this team, which is one of the reasons why he's going to stick with what's working, and you can't blame him. All right, let's uh, flip over and talk about the Steelers' defense, and to do that, let's listen to Cam Hayward in his post-game interview. We haven't been in our best on defense, um, but to have an offense that uh, is going out there giving us 30 points, uh, that's a lot to rely on. Um, you know, it, I hate to say it, it gives us more room for error, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a team game. And to have that complimentary football where if we give up a score, the offense goes down and gets another touchdown, um, 
you know, you really do appreciate that. I uh, really like Cam Hayward's Ted Lasso Believe shirt as well. Uh, he said it was appropriate for what they needed to do in Seattle and didn't get the help, help they needed yesterday, but that can continue into Week 18. But for this defense, just the amount of injuries that they've dealt with, you know, Coach Tomlin again today giving a shout-out to Eric Rowe, Miles Jacks, guys like that who – we're on the practice squatter, Miles Jack's case, you know, trying to fly a plane to get a license <laughs> and sitting on your couch playing basketball to going in and being the green dot. They've really stepped up and helped this unit. There's no question. You see so many guys. That entire uh, inside linebacking group has been ravaged with injury. They have basically practice squad guys. And I say that knowing that the practice squad has changed, Missy. It's not just a bunch of young guys looking to make a career. It's guys now who have been around just looking to be supplementary uh, additions when need be and and that's what we've seen here with this team uh and, and no matter who's been in there and rose been really good uh at helping out but you know they're going to give up plays we saw this geno smith making plays getting away from tj watt going to metcalf that, that's going to happen because you just don't have your starters in there right now but if you can limit the damage and i thought they did that yesterday with three field goals where seattle could have turned those into touchdowns but they came up with plays when they had to yeah forcing the three and outs making them punt doing things like that it was you know the bend don't break i know that's so cliche but for a unit that is ravaged by injuries sometimes that's what needs to happen and you know i thought Joey Porter Jr., you know, he said he circled when the schedule came out going against DK Metcalf. Uh, he still was able to do what DK Metcalf does, but in terms of being able to contain him where he wasn't, you know, ruining the game for them, they were able to do that. Yeah, and when you look at a stat sheet and you say at the end of the year that your top three tacklers are uh, Eric Rowe, Miles Jack, and Miles Killebrew, mm -hmm. you, you would have thought, well, wait a minute, the, the Steelers have been long eliminated that everyone like this is playing. But no, this is this is the reality of the situation. Those guys stepped up and made plays. And on third down, the Steelers had the better of the play. They, they you know, com converted third downs, whereas Seattle had an opportunity to do it, and they just couldn't because the Steelers rose up on those occasions. And they'll need to rise up once more Week 18, heading to Baltimore, a Saturday game at mm. 430. Coach Tomlin stating today Mason Rudolph will be the quarterback. Kenny Pickett was cleared at the end of last week, but they're going to keep the ball in Mason's hands for this week, as he said. But let's take a look at the playoff scenarios, what needs to happen. You never want to be in this position where you need to win and have something happen, but here we are uh, for the Steelers, kind of easy. You know, win is job number one there is a scenario where they can lose but I don't think all of those different things are going to happen and then hope that Miami beats Buffalo in Miami or that Jacksonville loses um, against the Titans and that's probably the easiest case scenarios that would happen but I do think it's interesting the way the NFL laid out the slate for week 18 not and nobody knew what day or time they were playing until late last night but knowing that possibly you win on Saturday against the Ravens, you might have to wait till Sunday night to figure out if you're in the playoffs or not. I guess that's a good thing because that means Jacksonville will have lost, you know. Uh, well, if they win, you would then, if Jacksonville wins, you're it's going to be all do or die on the Miami Bills it, game, which it, is really. Sunday night. Right, but that, I'm saying you need these things. So if you're watching in a day, you want to see Jacksonville lose. Correct. So that's Tennessee. They're a one and, and they're, they're, Yeah, they're a one o'clock game. So that'll start your day. It, this is all predicated on the Steelers winning on Saturday. That's first and foremost. But then if they do, then you have to watch the night, and this is how they have it set up. So that goes down right to the final week, final kick, final play maybe of the regular season to find out who's actually in the playoffs. You know, it was funny. I looked at this. 24 of these teams are still alive at week 18. Uh, that tells you just, you know, they want parity. They got parity. Uh, and and, and it, it leads to excitement, certainly. I think, you know, purists out there say there's too many teams involved in the playoffs. How could you not like Wild card weekend now. It has so many games and it extends even until Monday night. So if you're just a football fan, they know what you want and you're going to get it. I'm going to watch. I think everybody's Every, going to watch. Everyone's going to watch yeah. if you love football and just how wonky the NFL can be sometimes. And hopefully it works out in the Steelers' favor. And we're talking about that uh, and preparing for a playoff game next week. Yeah, but football watching on Sunday takes on better importance if the Steelers win on that's Saturday. Right. They have to win. So that's where it starts, 4.30. Look forward to it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for the Extra Point presented by Microsoft Surface. Thanks so much for joining us, and Happy New Year.